Hello, I'm Malcolm Cox, and this is your fourth Tuesday teaching tip. We're looking at various ways to help us to prepare a Bible lesson, a sermon, something like that. And these tips come from various sources, and certainly they're not the way to prepare a lesson, but they're a way. And I encourage you to try some of these tips and see if they work for you. And let me know if they do or not. We're focusing again on a passage in Mark chapter 8 that we've been using for the previous tips. And this time we're talking about top titles. What's that all about? Well, oh, carry on viewing. First, a quick review. We printed out the whole, pe whole text on one piece of paper so that we could see the whole thing. We've looked at common words and phrases. We've looked also for objects, people, things going on so that we get inside the passage. Then summarised the sequence of events. Having got inside the passage to see what is there first, then I, we printed out the text in landscape form to have a look at various possible structures to the passage. I settled on a two-point structure, which is basically pre-boat, before they're in the boat, and in the boat for the second half. The first half perhaps focused on disciples um, and what it means to follow Jesus before they actually really are following him into the boat. And then secondly, what it's like being with Jesus and following him in the boat. Leading to the ultimate conclu conclusion or question, what kind of man is this, which is the, the last phrase the last verse of this section. Perhaps what kind of man is this could even be a title, and titles is what we're dealing with today. How do we come up with our titles? Not just a title for the whole lesson, but the two points, for example, that I have here. I think there are different ways to do that, but let's look at a few. Let's take a different piece of paper. Let me help us. Um, my thought would be this. If we have our introduction here, which is there, the crowd is there, they're going to the other side of the lake, that's our intro, and then our first point is here, um, if you like, pre-boat, and our second point is here, um, in the boat, with a conclusion focused on this last verse. And there's different ways. One thing that I like to try and do is to take words from the text and use them in the titles. I find that that helps the passage to be more memorable to people, and it also uh, drives people back to the text when we um, uh, mention our points. So taking words out of the text helps. And the second thing that I read in a book somewhere is, or a magazine article I think, was that it's also a good idea if each point can have either Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, or God mentioned in the title. Why is that? A couple of reasons. One is that as we, we see, of course, Jesus is the central figure to this whole passage. It's important that we don't forget this. What kind of man is this? He talks. He stills the storm. Um, he is the central figure. When we preach the Bible, we need to remember we're not preaching just propositional ideas or concepts. We're preaching a person. We're preaching the person of God uh, and his different manifestations, in a sense, as Jesus and Father and Holy Spirit. But we're preaching a person. If the points have a person in them, it helps us remember, as preachers and teachers and people preparing something, that we are to be talking about someone, not just something. We're communicating a personality. So important and helps us to look, I think, more correctly even at the text as well as in our actual uh, preaching. And so, for example, here, what I might have is point number one could be Jesus um, is the captain. <laughs> uh, I like that because I've worked on a boat once many years ago and the captain, uh, the captain's word is law. The captain can uh, perform weddings, he can perf do funerals, and the sort of thing that on land one would not be able to do. Jesus is the captain, and not yet on the boat, but I think he's kind, of, kind of like interviewing potential people to work on his boat, to be on his boat with him. He, are we going to be in the boat with Jesus? Well, he sets the standards. He's the captain. When I worked on the boat, he was the person, above all others, to be feared on the boat, to be respected on the boat. His word is law. So perhaps that first point could be Jesus is the captain. Now, captain isn't in the text, but Jesus certainly is. And the idea of him and then being about to get into the boat is clear from the passage. Perhaps the second point could be Jesus 
um, is the owner. This is the big difference between being just the captain and being the owner of a boat. Uh, Jesus, in different senses, is both here. But if you're the owner of the boat, and that gives you even greater authority over things, and Jesus uh, demonstrates in this passage that he is, in a sense, the owner of creation. He's the one through whom all things were created, and we see him in charge of his creation. So he's the owner, uh, which we, we can talk about how much peace and security that gives you if you're with the owner of a boat as opposed to uh, just an employee. So we could have those two points. Jesus is the captain. Jesus is the owner. Um, if you wanted to emphasize following in a different context, because it does depend who you're preaching to in the context of, of the lesson, but of course following is a big deal uh, in this passage, follow, follow, and so on. So point number one could be um, follow me, follow me into the boat and uh, point number two could be follow me into the storm. Uh, we do get both here. Into the boat, into the storm. What does it take to get into the boat? But what does it take to be a person of faith in the storms? So we've got two sections there following in both both of those could work. If you wanted to emphasize, or you felt it was appropriate to do that, about what we expect of Jesus and what Jesus expects of us, then you could have uh, Jesus sets the expectations, the expectations of discipleship, and you could have Jesus exceeds our expectations so you know what we expect of him how much power do we think he really has what do we think he's really capable of and uh, that would be a good way to look at it um what about this one jesus is lord of men um the first person says teacher the second person says lord in this passage what does it really mean he's lord of men or mankind humankind lord of men and women and your second point could be Jesus is Lord of creation. Do we really understand what it means to call Jesus Lord? Alternatively, the first could be the faith to follow Jesus without reservation. No reservation. These two men have some reservations. And the second point could be the faith to follow Jesus through the storm. The first could be more simply get on board. And the second point could be with the Lord. The first point could be make him Lord. The second could be trust the Lord. And on and on we could go. I'm sure you have your own ideas and they may well be better than mine. But I would emphasize that I think it's very helpful if some of the words or some of the words can come out of the text. And if some of the words um, can be Jesus or God or Holy Spirit in, in our points, it again drives us back to who we're preaching and teaching about, which is so important. Not just concepts, not just ideas, but a person. So there you have it. Today's Tuesday teaching tip. I hope you find it helpful. Why not put it into practice and let me know whether it works for you or not. I would love to hear your questions about lesson preparation, uh, your comments on these tips and your own ideas as well. So please email them to me at malcolm.cox at iccmissions.org. We'll have another Tuesday teaching tip next week. But until then, I hope you have a tremendous Tuesday and a wonderful week. God bless.